Hi, welcome to SC Scholar's presentation on how to get your Encozy uh, SEP certification in three steps. I'm your host, Paul Martin, the owner and founder of SC Scholar. My company's here to help you get your Encozy certification. And so I found that if you want to get your certification, there are three steps you need to follow. I'd love to say these steps are easy. They're anything but. But this is why I'm here, to help you along the way and manage your expectations. So with that in mind, let's look at step one. Now, step one is you should learn the handbook. Now, the Nkosi SEP exam is totally based on this handbook, the System Engineering Handbook, that's actually a 340-page tomb with 31 processes in it. It's quite extensive. And if you go to the Nkozi website and look at what they suggest in terms of preparing for the exam, they actually say, read the latest version of the Nkozi System Engineering Handbook because it's the reference document for the certification exam. Every question on the exam will come out of this handbook. So because of that, with the handbook being so large and with so many uh, processes in there, I suggest you take my course. I've been teaching this since 2009 and I believe I have the tools that you need in order to pass the exam. What's nice about my class is I provide you a class online web portal where all my recorded lectures and all my study material is available to you so you can study at your own pace and in your own time frame. And as I said, I, com I have a complete set of lectures. I do five modules. I cover the entire handbook. Each of those lectures are actually recorded. Uh, it's over 25 hours worth of pre-recorded lectures. You'll be able to view these lectures and follow them at your own convenience. I do have a method on how I teach the course. I actually use this comprehensive process flow diagram. I know, I know it looks uh, complicated, but it's not like system engineering isn't complicated, it is. And that's why I walk you through all 31 processes, one process at a time. What I do is I actually start with a blank slate, and then I go through the agreement processes, move to the organizational processes, where a project is started, all the technical management processes, which surround the technical processes, which actually create this system of interest. And that system has to be designed, built, deployed, operated, and eventually disposed of. So I teach all 31 processes by building this chart, one process at a time. And if you look closely at the diagram here, you'll see how all the processes interact with each other, how the processes fit within the context of the vast machinery of system engineering. I also provide the sample exam questions. I have 20 10 question quizzes uh, for each of my modules. I, I provide two uh, quizzes that you can take at the beginning and the end of each module. I even at the end of the course, I provide a sample two hour, 120 question practice exam. What I've done is created a question bank of over 12 hundred questions. Now these questions aren't from uh, the, the exam, obviously. They're ones I made up by reading the handbook, going through it all, and actually creating um, questions that are of the same structure as the uh, exam that you could take. Now one nice thing about these uh, question banks is you can actually take each of the quiz multiple or even the exam multiple times and you'll get different questions each time you do it. So what's nice about doing this is you get more comfortable in taking uh, questions of this type and you'll be much more comfortable when it comes to actually taking the exam and eventually passing it. I also provide a study guide. I take all the IPO diagrams and all the activities, I put them in one uh, kind of little booklet that you can actually study prior to taking the exam. It's a great way to get ready for the exam. Also, um, I have this study notebook 
that you may find uh, fairly helpful if you're one of those uh, people who like uh, to actually take notes down. Um, I even have a um, in here some blank pages that you can actually fill out uh, the IPO diagrams. If that's something that's helpful to you, then you know go to Amazon, pick it up. I only charge five bucks for it. So what I do is I have all that material except for the notebook, which you have to buy separately. But all the material PDFs and all are available to you on this learning management system called Canvas. Now, after buying my course, I provide you access to that class portal. It has all the lectures all the PDFs of the process charts, the lecture slides, the study guide. I even have testimonies of previous students. Now the course will be available to you 24 seven. So you can study at your pace and at your convenience and in your time frame. Now, I don't, you will have access to this course as long as you need it until you pass the exam. So there's no time limit on this. If the time limit's you. If you want to pass the exam, study and pass the exam. But I'm letting you decide how long you need uh, to study. So it'll be available to you in Canvas here. All right. All right. We've learned the handbook. Now it's time to take the exam. So to take the exam, it's online registration for online exam. Now this exam is open registration. You can take it even if you're not a member. Uh, you can take the exam up to three times in any 12 month period. Now I suggest you schedule the exam as close as you can to uh, when you finish my class. That way you're kind of ready for the exam. Now to actually register for the exam, you have to actually log into an Encozy web portal. So what you'll need to do, and there is a step-by-step -step guide in Cozy provides, it, you have to set up a login for the Encozy portal. Uh, you don't have to be a member, it's free, uh, but you, you, need, you do need that Encozy account in order to register for the exam. And once you get in there, um, you can actually go in and log in at any time once you have that set up. So what you would do is go into your Encozy account page, Go to that certification drop down menu and actually hit select register for an exam. Once you get to the exam form, you select opening enrollment for online exam and they'll send you the information you need to schedule and to pay for the online proctor exam. You'll need to pay about $80 for taking the exam. You'll use the same process if you want to take a $30 um, paper exam as well. And um, you, you take those um, paper exams at these events, uh, like the Incozy Symposium or, or Workshop. You'll be using your own computer at a location you decide. It will be a proctored exam, so you need a camera, a computer camera that they can use to monitor your environment. As you take the test, they want to make sure there's no loud noises or weird movements. And all that information can be found in this testing guide that Encozy provides. Now, the exam itself is 120 multiple choice questions. Most of those questions have five answers. Only three are correct. I use the same structure for my quizzes and exams. And you'll have two hours to finish the exam. Uh, they provide you a scratch sheet up front uh, so you can take notes just prior to taking the exam. Once you're done, you submit it and you'll know immediately if you passed or not. Now, if you do fail, they do explain what areas you're deficient in. Uh, and remember, you can take the exam three, uh, two more times within a 12-month period after taking the uh, exam. All right, you've learned the handbook. And through my course, you've passed the exam, but you still need to submit an application to Ngozi so they can give you that certification. So there's um, two types of forms. The first one is the ASAP. You pretty much just fill out your, it's one page. You fill out your name, email, sign it, 
and dated. The CSEP, though, it's a little longer. It's like 11 pages. So those 11 pages can be split up into verifying your education, verifying your experience, and verifying your um, getting advocates or your references. Uh, let's look at verifying your education. That's fairly simple. You pretty much get your technical bachelor's degree or some kind of equivalent and scan a copy of that and send that uh, along with your application. The next part is verifying your experience. This takes a little bit more longer because you have to have at least five years experience uh, in multiple system engineering functional areas and at least one year of experience in each of the three or more 14 functional areas to be recognized as a system, you know, to recognize that system engineering experience. Now, we're not interested in you having all those functional areas, just some to show that you uh, are a system engineering professional. So these are the 14 functional areas that are recognized uh, under this experience. You'll notice that it has things like your system engineering technical competencies where you look at requirements or design or decision making and things like that. Then you have management competencies like planning and acquisition or CM or information. Uh, and then you have SE support uh, competencies like specialty engineering or project enabling um, activities. And then plus you have others that you can put. So you basically want to balance across that as you do it. By the way, each of these experiences is an attachment A that you can read and it describes in detail what each of these functional areas are. Um, so look through these, read them up. Uh, you'll be actually trying to look at those and try to look at your experience and separate your experience into these tech, these areas so it's important for you to read them and kind of understand them. What they want to do is see that distribution of your experience. Uh, remember, you're looking for um, five years experience, but you need at least one year of system engineering experience and three or more of these system engineering functional areas. As you can see up there on the first one, you could maybe have a, a year experience in doing requirements, a year experience in doing decision analysis, and three years in integration. That would actually work for them. That, that would meet their criteria. Or option two or option three, you can see I can have a year in requirements, a year in architecture, a year in integration, a year in CM, a year in decision making. That also will meet their criteria. And as you can see, there are other options as well. As long as you have one year experience for three of those, and then um, you can kind of split up the um, others as it makes sense as you go on. Now to get this process started, go to your forms and download the forms at the Encozy website. You'll be downloading the CSEP um, certification application. You'll also be uh, downloading the instructions the instruction letter to your references and your reference endorsement form is important as well. So you'll be filling out your form. Uh, you have to, again, read and understand all your system engineering work areas and functions and try to apply your work experiences and break them up then. Now, one of the things that's kind of hard is a lot of times you're working and you find yourself um, working three functional areas at, at one time. So you just have to split up that time in months by figuring out what percentage of time that you spent um, on those. So once you do that, uh, number one, you, uh, it, you need to calculate your total number of months. And they actually do that on the form. So you say how many months you've been on there and that actually gets um, put down onto the matrix and it makes sure that you don't say I have more months than the amount of months that you had on that experience. And then you go ahead, go to the functional area you say you worked, explain it and say how many months was this. 
all this gets translated into this matrix. So in each matrix, remember this is position one I'm looking at, and I had three, four, and five um, months where I was working various um, aspects of it. All that adds up to 12 months out of 23, so it's less. They like that, but it's only 12 months, so you have to keep going into each uh, position. So position two, position three, and they all add up. So you'll notice there the total, total uh, months of the effort are there. And the key is to make sure you have 12 months or more in at least three of those functional areas. And also that it all adds up to at least, you know, uh, five years or 60 months that you're doing. So that's uh, where you get your forms, you download, and they do have a sample form that you can download as well, just to kind of help you along as you're doing that. All right, the other thing you have to look at is what they call applicant advocates or references. And that's where you actually um, <clears throat> have to choose uh, three references with, that can cover five years of those three areas that you claim, they do need to be knowledgeable of system engineering. As a matter of fact, when they fill out the reference endorsement form, um, they actually have to explain how they are system engineers uh, by themselves. If they're actually certified, that's even better. Uh, it's easier uh, in that respect. And then once they're done filling out the form, they email it to Encozy. All right, so that's it. Uh, once you have those aspects of the um, submission done, you are done. You uh, will get your CSEP, um, and of course, if it's the one page, you'll get your ASAP. Um, so that's the three steps that you need to take in order to get certified. And I hope this has been helpful to you, and um, hopefully you'll sign up for my class so you can get certified. We're here to help you for that. Go to my website, se-scholar.com. All the information's there for you. Thank you. Have a good day.